Hello foodies, we are here in Oakland Park, one of the fastest growing and coolest neighborhoods in Greater Fort Lauderdale. And that's mainly because of these guys. We're at Funky Buddha Brewery. They're one of the premier breweries in the world, constantly winning awards for their culinary forward beers. They do stuff like maple bacon coffee porter. It's exactly what it sounds like, breakfast in a glass. You get the maple, you get the bacon, you get the coffee, it's phenomenal. And we're gonna try a couple of beers and also some of their great food from their craft food counter. Let's head inside. Man, so one of my favorite parts about coming to Funky Buddha is that I can order a flight. They have over a hundred beers that they make, and they're always featured on tap, rotating. You never know what you're gonna get. We're gonna start with one of my personal favorites, No Crust. This is a peanut butter and jelly beer. It's like biting into a sandwich. Whew. It's a brown ale. The body isn't too thick on it, and you get that grape jelly right in the front. You get a nice smell of peanuts in it, and like I said, it's exactly like biting into a sandwich. Next up is one of their flagship beers, Floridian. This is a nice, refreshing wheat beer, and it's perfect for the South Florida heat. Light, crisp, fantastic. Blue, how, how you doing, buddy? How we doing? How we doing? I'm doing good, man. Now I got a couple party. of beers here for you. What do we got here? Uh, so I brought you a banana pina colada. I know you love those tropical, uh, nice Latin drinks. And yeah. then I've got uh, pineapple beach here, too. Nice. I figure we can just share some beers. Yeah. Out, Cheers to you, brother. Cheers. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, thank you. And you guys are the top producing brewery in South Florida, yeah? In South Florida, How much beer yes. are you guys producing now? Uh, we're doing about 35,000 barrels a year, which put another way is about 9 million pints. 9 million pints? Yeah. How many of those pints have I drank? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pretty often. sure you account for about 2 million. About, about <laughs> just about, roughly. I'm actually gonna head over in, uh, to the craft food counter and uh, get some bites to soak all this up. You gotta get some food, man. Yeah, thank you, brother. Great yeah. seeing you, man. My pleasure. So after a few beers, I'm ready to soak all that up with some great food from the craft food counter here at Funky Buddha. Uh, Jeff, the chef, is going to run us through a couple of those dishes. Uh, probably the best thing to soak everything up is that chicken and biscuit, right? It's a great thing to soak up some beer with, man. We do a uh, big beer cheddar biscuit. We uh, batter some buttermilk and hot sauce fried chicken. Uh, do a little country gravy with some cracked red pepper over top and then smear some uh, honey beer butter over top of that. Mm. Uh, my personal favorite to nibble on while I'm having some beer is the, uh, the pretzel, the grain spent pretzel. Tell us a little bit about that. So we take our spent grains uh, from the brewery and incorporate it into our pretzel dough. Uh, it's a wonderful recipe. Uh, we're doing about uh, 1,400 pretzels a month right now. Uh, we're serving that with a couple of dipping sauces. We do a beer mustard in-house. We do a beer cheese in-house. We also have a honey sriracha sauce. Sweet. Uh, and I took a look at the menu, and I came across the bison burger. So that's Best what seller. I ordered. Uh, tell me a little bit about the bison burger. All right, besides being the bestseller, it is the best tasting burger that you're going to have. And it's, a, uh, it's ground bison, and we incorporate pork belly, uh, also red onions, some uh, secret seasonings and uh, spices there. Um, we melt some Munster cheese after we grill it. We top it off with a bacon red onion marmalade and serve it on a nice toasted challah bun. You're speaking to my soul, brother. You're speaking to my soul. And we have a uh, great beer to pair that with, correct? We do. Nikolai Vorlov is on tap right now. It's in a Russian Imperial Stout. Nice, thick body with a little sweetness. Complements this burger very well. I'm going to go ahead and take a bite if you're cool with that. I'd say take a big bite. All right. Here we go. I don't know if my mouth is big enough for this. Sop some of that up with the beer there, man. Mm. There you go. Oh, yeah. That is fantastic. The bread's got a little crisp to it, too. It's a yeah. nice crunchy bread. That's phenomenal. And you guys do burger nights here? We do burger night every Tuesday. So we do five varieties of burger, including our house 1201 burger, and then a vegetarian option as well. Brother, I'm going to take another bite of this if you're all right with that. Do it. And then... Uh, if I might uh, suggest a nice sip of that right after. Mm. No, that's good. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Uh, that pairs together phenomenal. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and head to the brewery. I have a special tour waiting for me. Jeff, it's always a pleasure seeing you, brother. Pleasure to see you. Thank you, you so Thank much. You. That was fantastic. Thank you. Uh, head into the brewery now for a special tour. So I've had the beer, I've had the food, and now I'm gonna see how the magic happens. 
my brother from another mother, Adrian, is gonna take me on a tour of the brewery. Uh, what do we got? You got some safety first, right? Yeah, Blue, as you know, we are a facility that specializes in the production of delicious beers made with a culinary approach. But at the end of the day, we are still a production facility and safety always comes first. So I am gonna need you to wear a pair of goggles at all times. Awesome. All right, so first things first, I wanted to show you our pilot system. This is where we hone in new recipes and where we're really able to experiment. So although it is a very small system and it's only good for three and a half barrels of beer every batch, it's a great way for the brewers to be able to uh, experiment and try new things. As you know, Blue, it takes four ingredients to make beer and they're all important in their own way. Water, malted barley, hops, Right. and yeast. Oh. We're gonna talk a little bit about malted barley right here, which is cereal grain, grows off a shaft just like wheat, and it's what we use to get a lot of the color of our beer, a lot of the flavor, and most importantly, those fermentable sugars. Once yeast gets to them, they're gonna turn beer into that alcoholic beverage that we know and love that makes us feel so good. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. We take our Pilsner malt, we throw it into our grain mill. The grain mill is gonna crack the grain and turn it into a very even consistency. Once we've done that, we're ready to move on to the next step of the process. So Blue, why don't you follow me right over here to the mash tun, where we're gonna make some wort. Yes, good kinds of wort. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Blue. This beautiful piece of machinery right here is called our mash tun, but I want you to imagine it as a gigantic tea kettle. Okay. So our first two ingredients, uh, malted barley and steaming hot water meat, and we steep the grain like tea and we extract all the color, all the sugar from it into this nice liquid, this tincture, which is the beginning of our beer and it's called wort or a young beer. Have you ever had a chance to try wort or young beer? No, I've never had young beer, but I've been drinking beer since I was young. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. haven't we all? Yeah. Well, young beer does not taste exactly like beer. It's super, super sweet. In fact, it's so sweet that we actually need to balance it out. And what we use to balance it out is hops. And that's uh. the, the, the next stage of the brewing process that we're gonna look at. But while we're here, I wanted to show you guys, this right here is what we call spent grain. We actually use this to make the pretzels that I saw you enjoying earlier ah, today. I'm a big fan of those pretzels. That's mm -hmm. really cool that that's made from, yeah. from this. And it's environmentally sound, you know? Awesome, yeah. sweet. All right, follow me and I'll show you where we add the hops to balance our beer out. Should we hop there? If you want, I can't get very high. All right, Blue. This is where uh, the next stage of the brewing process takes us. It takes us to our kettle. This is actually where we're gonna boil the wort. Why are we bo boiling the wort? We're doing that to sterilize it and clarify it. Towards the end of the boiling process, we're gonna add those hops in and they're gonna add bitter flavors and aromas that are gonna balance out the sweetness of the malt and give us something that tastes a little bit more like beer when we think of nice. beer. All right, Blue, and this is our cooling station. We're almost done with this aspect of the brewing process. Uh, we are about to start the fermentation. Before we do that, we have to bring this beer down to a cooler temperature, but still a warm temperature if we're brewing an ale. So this is like a radiator system. Cold water is going to kind of swirl around the beer without actually coming into contact with it. And we're gonna bring the beer down in temperature for an ale in the 70s. Okay. For a lager, much colder, 25, 30 degrees. Nice. And then after that, we're gonna start the fermentation process. So we're gonna go to one of these big fermentation tanks and I'm gonna show you how it all works. Wait. Follow me, Blue. Let's do that. All right. The brewers have finished doing their job. They've brewed wort. Now it's time for yeast to uh, brew beer. What yeast does is it eats sugar and it converts it into alcoholic content. So we're flanked uh, between two 180 barrel fermentation vats. Uh, right now we have a yeast strain inside of there, eating, gobbling up all the sugar that he can, converting it into alcohol. As a byproduct, they actually create CO2. Um, unfortunately, if we just left the CO2 inside of the tank while that was going on, it could explode. So we actually released the CO2 and we're gonna add CO2 at the very final stage of the brewing process in our bright tanks where we're headed now. Sweet, let's go check that out. I took you over here to show you how we finish our beer. These are our bright tanks. So the reason that we transfer our beer into bright tanks after the fermentation process is to pump them with CO2 that we lost during the fermentation process. We can either keg directly from the bright tanks or one of our bright tanks is actually hooked up to our bottling line 
state-of-the-art bottling line does just under 100 bottles a minute, but not all of our beers are gonna go into kegs or bottles. We also save some of our beers for barrel aging, which is- some of my favorites. Yeah, you yeah. know, in the craft beer scene, the community right now, they really go hard for the barrel aged beers. So what kind of barrels do we use? Tequila barrels, we have rum barrels, we have bourbon, we have whiskey, we have gin. Whatever liquid was in there before, it soaks into the wood, it gives the beer that flavor and vanilla and oak, and us beer geeks go crazy yeah. over these styles of beer. Adrian, thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you, always a treat. If you're visiting Greater Fort Lauderdale and you wanna take this brewery tour, you can get the tickets on their website. What's that website? It's www.funkybuddhabrewery.com. And uh, <laughs> thank you for tuning in to Crave GFL. It's our new foodie series on Hello Sunny TV. You can visit us at sunny.org slash TV. For now, we're signing off. I think we should go get another beer. Best idea ever. That sounds like friendship. Let's go.